waiting for the graphics to catch up, but I will call to order the joint meeting of the Glendale City Council and the Glendale Housing Authority for June, June 1st, 2010. May we have the roll call for the council, please? <clears throat> council Member Strayman? Here. Friedman? Quintero? Here. Weaver? Here. Mayor Najarian? Here. May we have a roll call for the Housing Authority? Authority Members Draymond? Here. Friedman? Mincy? Here. Najarian? Here. Krasian? Here. Weaver? Here. Chair Quintero? Here. May we have your report? Agenda for the June 1st, 2010 Joint Public Meeting of the Glendale City Council and the Glendale Housing Authority was posted on Thursday, May 27, 2010 on the Bolton Board outside City Hall. And uh, direct today, the meeting before you is regarding Director of Community Services and Parks regarding Pacific Pool Project. A 1A is Council Resolution adopting specification number 3423 for construction of the project and directing City Clerk to advertise for bids. Thank you. Mr. Chapchin. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Nigeria, members of the City Council and members of the uh, Housing Authority. Um, as you know, back in January, we came to you with uh, a design development for the Pacific Pool. You approved uh, us going out and, and starting the construction drawings. We are now finished with the construction documents and specs for the Pacific Pool project. Um, the pool design, as you can see, is an L-shaped pool with six swim lanes. The shallow portion of the pool is between two to four feet the deep end of the pool ranges from uh, 4 feet to 10 feet and accommodates a recreation diving board on one side of that. Um, based on feedback from the City Council when we brought this to you back in January, you asked that the uh, pool building be reduced in size and we did that. Um, three quarters of the building is dedicated to public use and or storage, so the majority of the building is uh, for public use. Um, the entire facility will be ADA compliant. The project will achieve LEED silver certification and uh, very likely that we will get gold LEED certification at this point without any additional cost to us, but we're, we're still working on that and I think there's an 80 to 85 percent chance that we'll be able to get, attain that. Um, this is currently a six million dollar project. We have 5.3 million dollars remaining for the construction phase of it. Uh, if approved today, um, we would we would bid and award this project in three months um, by August. Uh, begin construction in August 2010, uh, and hopefully we're shooting for completion of this project in June 2011, just in time for the summer months so the kids and, and the community can could enjoy this. Um, one of the questions you had when we came before you back in January is operational expenses. Where were we going to get that money? Um, we looked at. The Maryland Mini Park had a million dollars. There's nine hundred fifty thousand dollars left in that. Some of that was used for um, design work for the Maryland Mini Park. There is nine hundred fifty thousand dollars that we can use over the span of three years to cover the summer operational costs for the pool. Um, we are currently, we've we've gone through. We have passed the phase one of the Prop eighty four grant cycle, so we are in that mix for Maryland Mini Park. Uh, we're applying for one point eight million dollars for Maryland. From Prop 84 state funds, and, and I think we have a, a good chance of, of getting that. If not, then we can uh, use CDBG money for the Maryland Mini Park pool. So, pulling the general fund money from the Maryland uh, Mini Park for operational costs is one option um, to operate the pools once we build it. Um, with that, um, staff is available for questions um, from City Council. I'll just open it up for questions at this point. Mr. Quintero. Well, I don't have any questions, but I want to uh, say what a happy day this is for me. I'm really, really pleased that we're, uh, we've reached a sort of last stage of a very long uh, process. And um, I want to start by talking about um, the different people that have worked on this project throughout the uh, year, starting with Jester Ron, who's sort of the wizard of Wall Street in terms of putting the uh, putting the monies together to uh, to get this accomplished. And it's taken a number of years, multiple uh, funding sources, as we uh, as, as mentioned in the uh, report. And then, uh, as usual, Dave Ahern did a great job of bringing the uh, the project uh, together. And finally, you, Mr. Chapion, I appreciate all your support in doing this. But all of the residents in that section of Glendale 
and the rest of Glendale because I think this is going to be a destination point. They're all going to be very, very happy with this modern, updated uh, pool and and pool facility. So another uh, sort of pearl in the Glendale Parks Department. So thank you very much. Mr. Damon. Mr. Mayor, I am likewise uh, extremely happy about uh, the progress on this project. Um, I think uh, you should be extremely happy with the fact that uh, something that you've been working on and promising and, and uh, spearheading and championing in this community for years now is uh, about to take this big step. Um, I remember very clearly a day a couple summers ago when we sat uh, down at uh, Pacific Edison, a very hot summer day, it was literally one of those you could fry an egg on the sidewalk days, and yet uh, we were out uh, touring the site, uh, and, uh, and it hasn't stopped from there. Clearly it is, it, it may not be the exact project that in terms of scope that we had uh, uh, maybe considered if we uh, had our ultimate wish list. But what it is, is uh, a great community facility, recreational facility, in a part of a city where we desperately need recreational facilities. And to me, the plus is, I mean, to me, the greatest use for this is going to be neighbors in the most impacted part of our city having a place where they can show up with their children and their grandchildren and cool off on a summer day. Um, the, the added benefit, if you will, is the, uh, the fact that we have some additional uses for it in terms of uh, classes and training and, and, and other things that we were able to salvage and maintain in, in this project. Uh, the missing element, I think, was uh, what Mr. Chapshin was referring to, and that is how do you move forward with the, the maintenance and operation. And uh, we've been through the ringer on this whole project. Uh, the <coughs> idea of would the money from the state be there? How would and would it, you know, would it come through? Uh, so it, it it is a very great day. It's terrific. It's I'm very glad to be part of this uh, council at this time, to be a part of this. And I know I know uh, how important this is to you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor, and I'm also happy to support you on this. Thank you. Mr. Weaver. Well, there, there's no doubt that that neck of the woods needs a swimming pool. I remember when we were planning the Pacific Edison complex, uh, first I didn't realize until it was built there was going to be so much um, bright concrete exposed out there during the summer, which is really bakes the whole area. and it's. So it, it's greatly needed uh, down there. And, uh, but I have to be consistent with what I've said in the past. They need this swimming pool down here, but my responsibility in my own mind is to balance my fiscal responsibilities with the need of the community in a recessionary period. While there's apparently maintenance money for the first couple of years been found, we're talking about at least a half a million, probably infinitum, years out. I don't know where we're going to be in a year or two financially to guarantee we're going to box in a half a million dollars every year then on. I'm not prepared at this moment to say that that's where the money ought to go. I supported the project up to now. I said I would support it up to this point but I would vote against construction in 2010. I'm going to clear, need a pool there. But I'm concerned where the money is in the future. Something's going to have to give after the first couple of years. What's going to be the trade-off? Police, fire, or the pool? I know that pool that was there, people said it should never have been removed, but I think it was cracked and broken beyond repair. It had to come out, and we wouldn't have the uh, baseball fields there 
if we had not taken the pool out because of the rearrangement. So yes, it's a great idea, but it's the wrong year in my mind. So again, I, I know I'm standing alone. I won't have to worry about this no vote. Uh, it will be built. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. I just uh, would like to, uh, Mr. Chapter. And this would be an enhancement of services at this point because we still have the pools available at the high schools. Um, so we do operate those in the summertime as well. And um, what we're seeing right now is almost a 30% reduction in, in the bids for our projects. So it, we do save some money at this time for the construction of the project. So it, it's a trade off, I think, with bad times, but um, good bids at this point. I agree with that. Yeah. You will get good bids. Okay. Um, I just want to say it has uh, certainly has been a challenge. This project has faced uh, quite a few challenges along the way, and uh, you know I think the the concept of having a pool uh, in Glendale, a municipal pool, uh, probably goes back to oh, at least ten years uh, when I was taking my oldest son. I think it was five to the Glendale Gators swim program, and that's where I met. Courtney uh, Maglio, and we talked because the kids would have to leave because the high school was coming in for their water polo and all that. And uh, you know, I said to myself, "Why don't we have a, a pool for for our kids to use uh, more often and more frequently?" And it went from there. You know, my first I, I was pretty clear. My my first choice would have been to have a larger aquatic complex uh, with a 50 meter pool. Uh, with diving wells, et cetera. Uh, the, the financial uh, constraints of that type of project uh, have led us to pare this project down to the six-lane pool that we see, uh, but nonetheless, I think it will serve a, uh, a great use in the community. Um, <clears throat> we, can have, uh, we can have many, many different types of programming, and not only will children be learning how to swim, uh, in this pool, but perhaps our uh, parks department will learn uh, the uh, particular uh, intricacies of making a successful uh, programming plan where we are not running into the three hundred, four hundred thousand dollar deficits that it looks like we may have to run uh, to operate the pool. Uh, and that's, I think, going to be based on the, the huge demand that we're going to have for this pool. Uh, some are skeptics, I know, uh, but uh, if we were all skeptical, probably not a, uh, not a shovel of dirt would be overturned. There are many, many uses for a pool. I have, uh, I have personally seen people lining up outside uh, the Rose Bowl at 4 a.m. And, and I've seen them thrown out at midnight. Uh, and these are people who are willing to pay for the pool. These aren't just you know that your kids who want to pay a dollar or two and get in, but the uh, uh, but the master swimmers, uh, water polo players, and these people pay a significant amount uh, for a facility fee, uh, much more than a baseball diamond uh, or anything like that. So I'm uh, confident that as we get the sense and we realize the demand, uh, both within our community and within the region, uh, for our pool that we'll be able to put in uh, a lot of uh, productive and uh, cost-wise uh, cost uh, programs that, that will help defray some of those expenses. Um, and it will be a learning experience as, as we learn and see who's interested and how much people are willing to pay uh, outside of the, you know, the children in the neighborhood who are seeking relief from 105 degree uh, heat. <clears throat> so uh, it will be a learning experience for all of us, and and my dream of an aquatic complex uh, is not uh, gone. I'm I'm hoping that this is merely going to, shall we say, whet the appetite for uh, for those uh, people who never really thought about using a swimming pool, but would be willing to uh, support and uh, and use a, a larger facility. Uh, perhaps in another location in the city when when the time comes and when funds 
become available. But I, I thank you, George and staff, for going through the different iterations that we've had. Uh, we've had a few rocky meetings, and even though I blamed a lot of that on Mr. Ahern, probably wasn't all his fault. Uh, he was he was the one standing at the podium, perhaps uh, at that moment. So I apologize for my. Uh, uh, harsh looks at you in some of the earlier meetings, Dave. I know you're doing your best to make this a reality, and what we have is really something to be proud of, I think, for the community, uh, and it serves a neighborhood that's vastly underserved in terms of recreational facilities. Um, I'm happy. I can't wait for it to be built, and the eight or eight or nine month construction timeline that you're suggesting uh, is very exciting. Uh, so next summer. Well, the kids could be splashing around, which I think would be great. <clears throat> you know, money losers, um, but we have some really good staff, and staff who have over 20 years of experience among them uh, in pool operations. So we'll, we'll be able to ferret out what loses money and what can make us some money. Uh, for example, the Pacific Community Center, we make over 112000 a year in revenue from that. So we'll figure out a way to make money if we can. I'm sure it'll be a, it'll take a while to adjust to the, the likes and tastes of the community. So, and a speaker card for this? Uh, yes, there is. There's a card from uh, Mr. Mike Mohill. Mayor Nigerian, Mike Mohill, long-term resident of Glendale. It makes me feel good, cockles my heart, as they would say, to hear everybody here talking about how great it is to have a swimming pool at Pacific Park. You're concerned about the kids, the hot summers, and the poor people. They need a place to go. You made a comment. My, my question is, why has it taken seven years for this pool to be built? If, it was, if, if it's been that important to the community and to the city council, why seven years? Another point is, when I, when I look at, at Pacific Pool, I also compare this to Rock Haven. Mr. Mr. Draymond was elected in 2007, and eight months later, Rock Haven was approved for over $8 million for a few hundred people to use with no purpose yet, sir. Where the thousands of kids going to use swimming in that Rock Haven sanitarium place? I keep looking in the paper. Where are we going to, what are we going to do with this, this white elephant? I'm sorry to use that word. But the city has invested. And then I looked at the budget for 2010, another $1.2 million for Rock Haven. And again, I read nothing in the paper, nothing from council, what they're going to do with Rock Haven. Who speaks for Rock Haven? Who speaks for the Pacific Pool? David Chase Country Club has a beautiful swimming pool and a golf course, no less. And nobody here on council ever suggested that we purchase the Chevy Chase Country Club. It was just sold for about $3 million. $8 million from Rock Haven, $6 million for a specific pool. We could have a country club. Why are the people who live up in the Chevy Chase Hills are special? That's a golf course, nine holes, a swimming pool, a banquet room. But we don't have money to find that. We had an opportunity, you know, when the, when, the, when the reservoir had to be fixed here a year and a half ago, we had to pay the owners of the, of the uh, <coughs> Chevy Chase Golf Course a business interruption money. And then when the, when the rains came, we had to pay them more money. Had we owned the, the country club, we wouldn't have to pay anybody anything because we owned it. We're like a renter there, it seems like to me. So who represents the people of Chevy Chase Canyon? I think all five councilmen do. Can you make sure that the Chevy Chase Country Club stays private? They don't get any traffic. Of course not. I live up in Glen Oaks Canyon, right, Mr. Weaver? And we get all the traffic every day up to the golf and the, and, the, and the tennis up there. But that's okay for Glen Oaks Canyon, but not for Chevy Chase. 
What makes those people special? Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Mohel. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Weaver. Yeah, we have our golf course, our public golf course. We certainly don't need two golf courses in two adjacent canyons in the east part of Glendale. And as far as I can tell, Chevy Chase Country Club would be a financial loser for the city. And if the city tried to do anything in there, the residents would come out of the walls opposing anything that we tried to do other than leave it exactly the way it is as a money loser. As far as Rock Haven, one day, because I didn't even know what <coughs> Rock Haven was, Mr. Draymond called me, wanted me to go up with him and take a look at it, which I did. And based on what I saw, I was ready to buy it. It's an investment. I saw a library going in there. I saw, in my own mind, I saw a back area that could be opened up for weddings and parties, whatever. It's all cleared and redeveloped. I could see parking structure underground there for the, for the people to use the library. And who else, what else could have gone in there? There's some historic buildings that should be kept and can be used. It had a lot of public purpose in its acquisition. And a parcel of land that large, you're just not going to find every day. Um, so I thought it was a, a great investment. Uh, even if you talk, where where's, where's the library? Well, gee, when are we going to find the money? Got to have the money before you can do anything. If you can develop it as a recreational site for people to have parties, of, oh, gee, where's the money? You know, we're in recessionary times. I just voted against a pool that I think is great because I think financially it's wrong. And the same thing, Rockhaven, where's the money? We're going to have to wait till the economy turns around before we start talking about developing Rockhaven. But that was an absolutely great investment, much better than some of the open space acquisitions that we acquired, which we did not would not have had to pay for if limited amount of housing had been put in. We could have saved twenty, thirty million dollars is my guess, but that's just my own personal opinion. So I just thank you, Mr. Draymond, for taking me up there, showing it to me. It'll be a great it'll be a great location one of these days when we, we get it done. Plus we have a well up there now. That's true. We're getting water. If there are no other comments, I'll move uh, I'll Mr. Mr. Draymond. Mr. Draymond. Go ahead. I've remained uh, largely <coughs> silent as uh, Mr. Mohill has <coughs> continued with his non-factual claptrap. You can bring that up tonight. Uh, I'll say it again, non-factual claptrap about Rock Haven. Uh, no, you may not have read about it in the newspaper, but clearly you also haven't been reading our own uh, minutes and agendized items regarding Rock Haven. It was purchased for a specific reason, not just willy-nilly. First of all, this council purchased that site as the site for the new Montrose Branch Library. That will be the site unless some future council changes their mind. That's what we voted to do. And that for the, uh, for the open, open portion, the vacant portion of that site, which is a three and a half acre site that costs the city about $50 a foot, which is a bargain, as your superhero, Mr. Yusefian, used to say, show me any property in the city at that rate, and I'll vote to buy it. Um, and he voted to buy this one as well. Uh, also remember that the reason the Montrose Library was going to go there is because it is the busiest branch library in the entire Glendale system, and not by a few visits or a few books, but by thousands of visits and thousands of books checked out. Um, further, the reason this council chose to purchase that site is because it is a historic site, which only goes to show, Mr. Mohill, that you don't know much about the Crescent Valley or its history. It was settled for its sanitariums. Crescent Valley was deemed in national press in its inception as the cleanest air in the country, and so sanitariums sprang up all over the, uh, all over the area, 28 of them or so. The only one still remaining was Rockhaven Sanitarium, uh, which has a tremendous history. And uh, so it was uh, uh, thought that it should be evaluated as a historic site as well, and it has been. Thirdly, um, we saved money by purchasing Rockhaven. The 
because when I came to this council in 2007, my very first taste of a budget session uh, was that uh, the city was going to build a new fire station on the site where, oh my goodness, Trader Joe's is going now, to the tune of uh, more than $17.5 million. And the plan was to build a new fire station and, a, and expand a library. And uh, uh, all of that totaled up to well over $23 million. Instead, the plan became, uh, not just because of me, but because of uh, consideration by uh, the city council at the time, uh, the purchase of uh, Rock Haven Sanitarium as the future height, a site of the Montrose Branch Library to eventually rebuild the fire station on the existing footprint, taking over the space that is now the library, and to offer a ground lease for a retail anchor uh, for the uh, Montrose Business District, which is Trader Joe's. So we have a quarter million dollar, roughly, a year uh, revenue that will be spent on the area. And as Mr. Weaver pointed out, we struck water on, uh, on the Rock Haven site, and it will be a well that will be servicing the not only the Rock Haven site's needs for irrigation in the future, but also the, the community of uh, the Glendale community at large. Uh, these are all very good and sound reasons uh, to, uh, to have made th those moves. Uh, the fact that you're not up on the history of it or the development of it, uh, if you'd like to pick up a phone and set an appointment, I'd be happy to talk to you about it a a at a date after I get my voice back. So anyway, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Quintero. Well, I wasn't going to say anything, but I keep getting pulled into the... Uh, <laughs> to the conversation, so I'll, I'll start at the uh, beginning. Uh, in terms of the old pool, I made an appearance in front of the city council on a Tuesday uh, to plead, this was before I was elected obviously, to plead with them uh, to leave that pool in. I attended all of the different meetings that were held at community uh, meetings. And that weekend, uh, I remember counting, I believe it was on a Saturday, I counted 98 people using the pool. A lot of uh, mothers and children and younger people. The next day on a Sunday, over 100. And uh, so anyway, we should have kept the pool. We could have kept the ball diamond. It needed some uh, upgrading. We should have kept the pool. So for seven years, instead we built a tremendous project. I mean, it's just used constantly basketball courts, baseball, soccer, basketball courts in and out, the meeting space, the library, it's a tremendous project. So unfortunately the residents for approximately seven years or more haven't had a pool, but they will uh, have a very much of an upgraded pool, so it's going to far surpass what was there uh, years ago. So in the end it worked out for the uh, neighborhood. Then on the issue of uh, Rock Haven and open space, um, I'm on record, but I want to reiterate once again that any opportunity that this city has to purchase either open space or space for parks, develop parks, it's a mistake if we don't take it, regardless of the geographic location. I mean, people in South Glendale have cars, they ride buses, etc. Verdugo Park, Brand Park, they're not just used by local residents, they're obviously used from, by residents who live in the southern portion of the uh, city. So both recreational facilities using uh, the different high schools for dual and, uh, and well, Glendale Unified School District properties, using them for dual use and purchasing many parks and doing everything we can to purchase park space makes a lot of sense regardless of the cost. It's cheap by uh, comparison with with not doing uh, anything. So I'm ready to move 1A. I move uh, the resolution 1A, well, Mr. Um, Howard. You're the chair, actually. So. <laughs> uh, for the city council. It's a uh, council, council resolution. Okay. Council resolution. So, okay. so who, who has the second? Hang on. I have the second. I'll move the item then. Okay. Roll call, please. Uh, uh, Mr. Howard. Yes. yes. Mr. Mayor, members of council, it will be a resolution as modified. Director of Parks can go into detail if you'd like, but there are some minor technical details, such as I think a, a permit from the county we're still working on to include in the specs. So we've added a sentence to paragraph one 
to authorize the Director of Community Services and Parks to make minor technical changes before the specifications are released. That would relate to I'll move okay. with those specifications included. And will you second? I will. I will come okay. second. And I assume those those technical <coughs> specifications were the was a language swimsuits optional. Yeah. Uh, that you'll have to check with the director of uh, community services and parks. Okay. We'll talk to the printer. Okay. Roll call, please. Council members: Draymond here. Friedman. Yes. Yes. Quintero. Yes. Huber. No. Aaron Jarian. Yes. Is there a motion to adjourn for council? So moved. Second. Motion to adjourn for the housing. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, we have one more.